ภัยStarlight Galaxy s and Cluster. As you can see in our uh, slide pre uh, projected in in the video, that uh, when when we are going to study these Starlight Galaxy s and Clusters, now because in astrochemistry it is important to uh, to us to know uh, what are the compositions of the stars, uh, what are the materi uh, materials that exists in the galaxies and uh, and in clusters. Okay. So clusters, uh, uh, clusters. No, so it is on the star, star cluster or the galaxy clusters. No, and we'll go uh, deeper than that later on. Okay. So uh, of course, no. So when you are looking in the night sky or day sky, no, you can see the starlight. No. So starlight is coming from our sun itself or coming from the stars that we see in the night sky. Now. Uh, what are the uh, what are the possible information that we can get in these starlight? Okay, so uh, a black uh, star, no? So, sabi natin that it is a ball of uh, gas and fire, no? So, how are we going to uh, get a model of a star? Okay, so. Uh, we go with the simple stellar models. Okay, so for the be uh, best example here is the black body radiation. Okay, so what is uh, first? What is a black body? Okay, so a black body is an object that absorbs and emits all wavelengths of radiation with equal efficiency. Okay, so it means that uh, if a black body absorbs a certain radiation, it will emit the same amount of radiation. Okay? So also, as, uh, as we discussed in our earlier discussions, that a black body is a perfect absorber. Now, uh, th this produces a continuum electromagnetic emission spectrum over all wavelengths against which absorption features associated with the elements and molecules present in the stars can be seen okay so it means that uh, the re the black body the radiation coming from that black body will emit at a certain wavelength okay so it will emit a uh, radiation at this uh, at maximum at this wavelength okay and uh, although the maximum na sa wavelength it also emits sa other uh, other part ng ating electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? Now, uh, let's discuss. No? So, since we already defined what is a black body, let's have our uh, properties of a black body. Ano nga ba meron sa mga black body na ito? Okay? So, black bodies have formed an important part in the development of the theory of quantum mechanics. And were studied by the early quantum physicists, producing a number of laws relating the temperature of the black body to the photon flux, the luminosity, and the intense wavelength, culminating in complete description of the wavelength intensity relation known as the Planck's law, from which we see for the first time the Planck's constant. Okay, so we will discuss that later on. But let's have the, uh, the let's have the discussion on the properties of a black body. Okay. So first black uh, first property of a black body is that a black body with a temperature of greater than 0 Kelvin or the absolute uh, zero will em uh, emits radiation at all wavelengths. Okay? So uh, ano ibig sabihin nun? Uh, emits at all wavelengths. It means that uh, whether it is radio, visible, infrared, uh, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray it will emit in all uh, radiation, uh, in all uh, wavelengths, okay? So, not necessarily na mataas yung iniimit niya sa gamma rays, mas mataas ang iniimit niya sa radio waves, it will depend on the black body itself. Next, a uh, property of a black body is a hotter black body emits more light at all wavelengths than a colder black body. 
because if we have a hot black body or a hot object no so mas madali natin siya ma-detect indirectly if we know that if it is hot okay so because in that uh, if that object is hot no malalaman na natin kung uh, uh, kung gaano siya kainit by looking at the color of the object no so uh, by best example no if we hit up a metal ball no masasabi natin na sobrang init na niya kapag pula na siya okay but we cannot say if um uh, init na siya kung uh, hindi nagbabago yung color niya okay now next a hotter black body emits A hotter black body emits more of its radiation at shorter wavelengths. Bakit? Kaya. Because uh, they are emitting high energy radiation. Okay? So, uh, shorter wavelengths, higher the energy. And last, black bodies emit and reflect radiation at all wavelengths with equal efficiency. Okay? So, nag emit din siya, nagre-reflect din siya ng radiance with uh, radiation. At all wavelengths with equal efficiency. Okay? Now, uh, since we already discussed the properties of a black body, you know, so we discuss now how does the temperature, the wavelength, the radiation relate to each other. Okay? So first, we uh, we discuss the what we call the Stefan Boltzmann's law. Okay? So the total, uh, sabi nito sa uh, Stefan Boltzmann's law, It is the total flux or the power per unit area that is directly proportional to the amount of energy emitted from a black body and its temperature. Okay? So, uh, mathematically speaking, no, that the uh, total flux, no, so we symbolize that at, as F, is equal to that uh, lowercase sigma multiplied by the fourth power of the temperature. Okay, so F as the total flux, which is the power per unit area. No? So in units, that will be the watts per uh, square meter. And then T as the temperature of the black body. Okay, so we measure the temperature of a black body in kelvins. And then the lowercase Greek letter sigma represents the Stefan's constant. Okay. So that will be equal to 5.67 times 10 raised to negative 8 watt per uh, square meter per uh, kel uh, for power of the Kelvin. Okay. So how are we going to uh, visualize this uh, Stefan Boltzmann law? No? So by just determining the temperature of a star, we can now determine uh, we can now determine the total flux of that star or that, that uh, or that black body okay so for example though that the part of the sun that we can see is called the photosphere okay now again now that we can see that is the photosphere and has a surface temperature of 5780 kelvin okay so since we already have this uh, temperature or the surface temperature or also known as the effective temperature of a star determine that that's uh, the solar flux of the sun okay So, just by uh, using the Stefan Boltzmann equation, we just need to substitute the values of the Stefan's constant and the uh, temperature so we can get the uh, total, uh, total value of 6.3 times 10 raised to 7 watt per square meters. Okay, so that will be our, the, uh, that will be our Stefan Boltzmann's law. Okay, so we discussed already what the Stefan uh, Boltzmann law is. Now, uh, since we already discussed the uh, flux per uh, the power per unit area, okay, so we now go with uh, one of the properties that we need to know uh, of uh, regarding the black bodies. Okay, so the luminosity is it is the rate of at which energy is radiated by the black body over all wavelengths no so sabi nga natin going back to the properties of a black body that a black body emits at all wavelengths okay so uh, how are we going to determine the luminosity of a black body 
Okay, so it is simply D is the fan Boltzmann law multiplied by the surface area of the uh, of the sphere. <coughs> okay, so bakit, uh, why is it that uh, it is the product of the Stefan Boltzmann's law and the uh, surface of area of the photosphere? Because the luminosity will depend on the distance of the detector from a star. Okay? So as we can see in this uh, equation that the luminosity is equal to the area of the sphere multiplied by the Stefan constant and uh, temperature raised to 4. Okay? Now, uh, for example, no? so using the same star, our sun, knowing that the radius of the sun is uh, 6.96 times 10 raised to 8 meters. Okay? Determine the luminosity of the sun. Now, uh, we just need to input these values, the radius of the sun, the, uh, the surface temperature of the sun that we, uh, that we discussed earlier. Okay? So, we get 3.8 times 10 raised to 26 watts. Okay? So, take note no, uh, that we are now getting the power Okay, so the power that the sun is emitted from the photosphere. Okay, so that is how the luminosity works. Now, in other case, okay, so we discuss the Wyant's law. Okay, so what is the Wyant's law? The maximum radiation flux is maximum at a maximum wavelength. Okay, so lahat nakamax. Okay, by that, uh, we can get the uh, maximum wavelength uh, uh, that is equal to the W over the temperature where the W is the Wyant's constant which is also equivalent to 2.9 times 10 raised to negative 3 meters per kel uh, meters Kelvin okay so uh, it is a simple equation so for example no, our sun again we know that the sun's temperature is 5,780 uh, Kelvins Okay, so yun lang naman yung kailangan natin to determine the uh, maximum wavelength where the maximum radiation uh, emits. Okay, so that uh, in that case, that is 501 nanometers. Okay, so that is uh, in the visible uh, spectrum. Okay, because the visible spectrum is coming from uh, 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Another property that we need to uh, discuss is the inverse square law. Okay, so because this in inverse square law is applicable in the gravitation, applicable din siya sa brightness, applicable siya sa luminosity, applicable siya to other uh, parameters that we're going to discuss. Okay, but now we're going to discuss the inverse square law uh, as the amount of energy landing on every square meter of a sphere of radius equal to the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Okay? So, we know that the distance between the Earth and the Sun is one astronomical unit. Okay? So, that one astronomical unit is equal to uh, 1.5 times 10 raised to 6 kilometers. Okay? Now, the amount of energy arriving at the top of the atmosphere with a satellite borne detector gives a flux of uh, 1,370 watts per square meter. Okay, so that will be a constant arriving, remember, on at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. Okay? Now, okay, now so for example, uh, what is the flux arriving at the Earth's atmosphere from the Sun? Given that the luminosity of the Sun is 3.8 times 10 raised to 26 watts. Okay, just input the equation. No, kailangan lang naman natin yan is the luminosity of the sun and the uh, distance between Earth to Sun. Okay, so in that case, we get the uh, 1 point, uh, 1,362 uh, watts per square meters. No, so in kanina, the 1,370 is merely rounded up na value. Okay? So, but you can also compute that using the equation that I have given to you. Now, other than that, okay, so we now go with the Planck's law. 
Okay, so we'll, uh, I mentioned this earlier that uh, the Planck's law for block body radiation, it is basically the unified law for Stefan Boltzmann law and the Wyant's law. Okay, so the Planck's analysis of the spectral distribution of block body radiation led him to understanding of the quantization of energy and radiation and the role of photon in the theory of radiation because the photon carries the energy coming from a particle. No? So, as you can see in this equation that the uh, intensity no, we, uh, as a function of wavelength and temperature since they are related to each other where we can uh, define the H as the Planck's constant. Okay, so the Planck's constant is 1.636 times 10 raised to negative 31 joules, uh, joules second. Okay, so again, now this is a constant value. Now, as you can see in this figure, uh, black body radiation curve of each black uh, of each black body at a specific temperature. We have 2,000 kelvins here, 3,000 uh, kelvins here, 3,500 kelvins, 4,000 kelvins, and 5,000 kelvins, no? So, nakikita natin that the max, the, uh, the radiation is at maximum if that is 2,000 kelvin is in between 1,000 to 2,000 nanometers. But if we go higher in our temperature scale, the maximum wavelength will be less than 1,000 nanometers. Okay? So, katulad na lang din, uh, like our sun, that the sun is 5, 000, at approximately 5,500 uh, kelvin yung surface temperature niya. So, yung uh, computer is 500 1 nanometers. Okay? So, which is close to the 5,000 uh, dun sa uh, computation natin kanina. Now that we have a simple model for the continuum spectrum of the stars based on the Planck curve, no? yung previous slide natin kanina, that we have these uh, curves. Okay? So, where the uh, y-axis or the vertical axis is the temperature and the horizontal axis is the wavelength. Now, uh, we can now make some observations of stars based from it. Okay? Star hopping in the night sky should lead to a to, to the simplest observation, no? So kapag tumitingin tayo sa night sky, bukod sa nakikita natin yung mga patterns, no? Na visualize natin yung patterns, we create patterns, we can see the, also the constellations. It is important for us as a scientists that we observe that these stars have different colors. Okay, merong blue, merong orange, merong red, merong parang white, no? So, uh, what does these colors mean? Okay? Per color, there is a specific uh, temperature. So, the black body radiation loss tells us that this is due to the surface photosphere temperature and must contain information on the structure, age, composition, and evolution of the star from which complete classification has been derived. Okay? So the assumption for this uh, underlying, uh, the assumption underlying this temperature determination is that the star has a black body spectrum that follows the Planck curve. Okay? So we still go follow the Planck curve. Now, uh, some of you might notice that when reading uh, scientific articles regarding the brightness of the stars, no, ma ma uh, you can see the B region, the V region. Okay, so what are the difference between the two? In the blue region or the B region, uh, the astronomers uh, classify this as the wavelength of the star at 400 to 500 nanometers. While in the visible or the V region, 500 to 600 nanometers naman siya. Now, if we get the ratio of that or the B over V ratio, uh, we can determine the temperature of the star by just getting the ratio of their uh, brightness. Now, since I am talking about the brightness, I introduce you with the stellar magnitude. The stellar magnitude is basically the brightness of a star. And this stellar magnitude have no units. 
Okay, so this basically numbers, no? But these numbers extends from uh, uh, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so that will depend on the brightness of the object. Now, uh, how does uh, how does this magnitude uh, scale form? Okay, so historically, Hipparchus constructed a catalog of the stars and ranks their brightness into six categories. Okay? So, syempre, mata lang yung gamit niya, no? no? So, ice, naked ice. Now, uh, that is from one as the brightest. Okay? Then, we have the uh, first magnitude, second magnitude, third magnitude, fourth magnitude, fifth magnitude, and sixth magnitude as the dimmest. Okay? Again, no, that this is uh, based on the naked eye observations. Okay? So, uh, uh, then... Uh, we have these two types of stellar magnitudes or two categories of uh, stellar magnitudes. First, we have the absolute magnitude. So the absolute magnitude is the magnitude of a star at a specific distance. Okay, so what is this specific distance? At 10 parsec. Okay, so the concept of parsec will be uh, discussed later on. Then, apparent magnitude, it is the magnitude of a star as perceived by the naked eye. Okay, so just like what Hipparchus did during the ancient times. Since uh, there are no telescopes at that time, there are no other astronomical uh, equipments at that time, only the naked eye. Okay, then later on, astronomers standardized this. No? So, ano nga ba yung mga ano natin dyan? Uh, examples, no? Uh, meron tayong Sirius, uh, at negative 1.4 uh, at full moon negative 12 okay so as the numerical value decreases or the popular negative uh, number line the brightness increases by what factor by 2.5 times okay so the standardization comes from the quant uh, quantitative observations showing that the first magnitude stars are about 2.5 times brighter than second magnitude star so therefore that a first magnitude star is 100 times brighter than a sixth magnitude star. By that, we can determine the uh, magnitude of a star, the, uh, of the star based on two uh, stars. Okay. So for example, no. Uh, again, no, that the uh, in the equation uh, f sub one and f sub two are the measured fluxes of the stars and m sub 1 and m sub 2 are the stellar magnitudes. For example, uh, the twins Castor and Pollux have, have magnitudes 1.97 and 1.16 respectively. How much does Castor emit light? Okay, so we can determine uh, using the equation that we have earlier, na, substitute lang natin siya, yung m sub 1 and m sub 2 lang. Okay, simple algebra lang gaga uh, gagawin natin, then we get the uh, ratio of the fluxes. Then get the reciprocal of that. We have 47.42%. It means that Castor emits 47.42% light than Pollux. Also, uh, the stellar magnitude is a relative measure. Uh, the relative measurement of the stellar flux is easier than the absolute measure measurement. Because in order for us to measure the absolute magnitude, we have to go at a specific distance and directly measure that brightness of the star or the flux of the star. Okay? So by that, we use the standard candles. Okay? So what are these standard candles? These standard candles uh, have measured flux with extreme care, wherein these standard candles have no change in their flux. Okay? So, wala pagbabago sa flux doon, hindi siya variable. Now, because there are variable stars. Now, pag sinabi na variable stars, it changes its uh, magnitude uh, per period of time. Okay? Once the luminosity of the standard candle has been determined, all other objects in the heavens can be assigned a magnitude based on relative measurement. Now, by that, using our previous equation. And... Again, now we have the B over V intensity ratio. No? So what is this B over V intensity ratio? It is an excellent relative measure 
of magnitude and it is possible to derive the to derive a b over v magnitude and derive the calibration curve for the temperature of a star by that we cannot determine the temperature we cannot determine the uh, b uh, b magnitude and the v magnitude but there is only a problem the only problem here is that the luminosity of a star depends on how far the a star is okay kasi uh, sabi nga natin, it is affected by the inverse square law. Ayan. So, as we can see in this figure, the B over V ratio, now, as it goes higher, bumababa din yung temperature niya. So, yun lang naman yung pinaka-explanation uh, on that on that graph. Now, sabi natin that the luminosity depends on the distance. How are we going to determine the distance? Okay? So, we can determine the distance of a star using stellar parallax. Okay, so what is this stellar parallax? The stellar parallax is the measurement of the distance of a star using the principles of parallax. Okay, so uh, during the high school or the elementary days, you were uh, discuss kung paano nangyayari parallax, no? Just extend your arm, na nakatam, uh, thumbs up, then uh, interchange the uh, yung eyes mo, nagpapalitan mo lang yung uh, close sa ka-open. Then you can see that there is a apparent shift on the background of your thumb. No? So that is basically the stellar parallax. And how does it work? The distance of a star is equal is equals to 1 over the parallax angle. Okay? So, rem at how are we? Uh, uh, this is the parallax, the distance, uh, the, the unit of distance that was used in the stellar, stellar parallax is parsecs. Okay, so what is a parsec na ngayon? A parsec is uh, a star with a parallax of one arc second. Okay, so one parsec is equals to 3.26 light years or, or in standard units, this one parsec is equal to 3.08 times 10 raised to 16 meters. Okay, so imagine that. No astronomical distances. Now, there's a problem. That uh, there is a limit for angle measurement with the telescopes, with it, which is 0 0.01 degrees. Bakit may ano pa? Uh, why there is a limit? Because it is only applicable with the nearby stars. As you go far, Yung may, uh, di mo na masyado mapapansin yung changes in angle or halos wala nang change in parallax angle. Okay? So, what is the, ano? What is the length scale? Okay? So, we can determine the distances of the star if that is within 1 to 100 parsecs. Only. Okay? <coughs> so, if that star is within that distance, or from 4 light years to 326 light years, we can use parallax to determine its uh, distance from the sun. Okay? So, para siya nag, uh, again, no? So, as we have this figure, gato siya nag, nag, ano, nag work. Where the box here represents our sun and itong circles dito represents the earth. Okay? So, because kailangan natin ng malaking uh, diameter. To conduct this uh, parallax, this stellar parallax. Okay, lastly, we have this called galaxy. Galaxy is also called an island universe. Okay, so because it is a group of stars, dust, gases that are gravitationally locked. It means na uh, lahat ng group, lahat ng stars na yun magkakasama sa isang gravitational field. Okay. So, can be found anywhere in the universe. Okay, kahit saan ka tumingin sa universe, may makikita kang galaxy. If you're familiar with the Hubble, uh, Hubble Deep Field, okay, so yung mga yun, galaxies lahat yun. Now, there is a classification of galaxy according to the works of Edwin Hubble. We have the elliptical. Okay, so elliptical, uh, these are the galaxies which is uh, large. Okay, so relatively large yung ano nila, yung galaxies na yun. Spiral such as our galaxy, which is Milky Way Galaxy. Okay, so pag sinabi natin spiral, parang ano siya? Uh, spiral. 
No? So, yun lang yung uh, physical distinction niya. And lastly, the irregular. Irregular galaxies are the ones that is not uh, irregular and not spiral. Okay? So, in short, there is no definite shape. 